Hello again, YouTube. Last night I went to see The Martian, which is a movie that stars Matt Damon and is directed by Ridley Scott. And over the last 24 hours or so, I've been trying to think, what do I really want to say about this movie, and how do I really feel about it overall? Beyond the fact that it's a good movie, I enjoyed it, and it has great visuals that make Mars feel like a real environment. Now, for some people, that's okay, that's all I need to know, goodbye. But for others, I guess it's hard for me to say much beyond that without just going into critical mode. So I want to say from the very beginning that this is a good movie. But at the same time, it's not a great movie. Which, it seems that Ridley Scott has a habit of doing that. Now I should say, for those of you who have mixed feelings about Ridley Scott's movies, which I'm sure many of you do... Obviously, this is not one of his masterpieces, as you can sort of tell from the way that I'm like, man, I'm not really sure. But at the same time, this is not one of his crappy movies, and this isn't even one of those movies that I feel somewhat ambivalent about, like Prometheus. This is a solid movie, a, a solid entry in the canon of Ridley Scott movies, if you will. And part of me thinks that it might, some of it might have been just my frame of mind going into the movie. A couple days ago, I finished a book called Seven Eves, which is by Neil Stevenson, one of, who is someone who's become one of my favorite writers. And Seven Eves is a book about human beings, the human race, in a desperate fight for survival. In space! And perhaps because the dramatic stakes in the book Seven Eves were so much greater than one man being stranded on Mars that I, I guess it didn't quite fill the void that I was trying to fill. Because I don't know how many of you have ever had that experience where you finish a book or you finish a book series and you're like, man, I just want more of this. I want it to continue. I want to linger in this world. So you try and find all these substitutes. And The Martian for me was my substitute for withdraw from finishing Seven Eves, although that wasn't a perfect book, but that, it needs its own review, okay? No tangents, no more tangents about that. So maybe it was just my frame of mind that left me feeling slightly flat about this movie. But as I stopped to think about it more, I think that dramatically this movie doesn't really do anything all that surprising. So more or less from the very beginning of the movie, I got a sense of the tone of the movie, and from that I made my own prediction, my own gut feeling, if, it, if you'll forgive me that saying, about the overall outcome of the movie. And that was correct. Now, I'm not going to spoil it for you by saying what that was, but let's just say my intuitions and my, my gut feeling about from the beginning of the movie based on the tone about how the overall outcome of the movie, what that would be, that was correct. My experience of the movie was that at many times it felt like it was failing to reach the emotional and dramatic level that it was trying to aim for. The odd thing to me was that the experience of the character didn't even seem all of that harrowing. Ostensibly, it's a movie about a man stranded on Mars, but the primary drama seemed to be mostly with the people who were trying to rescue him. No, don't get me wrong, trying to rescue a person off Mars would be a monumental effort. Nonetheless, being stranded on Mars, you would think that was where the movie's dramatic focus would be. Now, of course, he does face some setbacks and obstacles because... You're not going to have a script made without those sorts of things because everyone who's taken screenwriting 101 knows that the hero's got to face some setbacks in his journey and so on. So, of course, there are certain things that throw his plans through a loop. Nonetheless, the real drama of trying to rescue the character, the real drama of the movie, seemed to mostly be with NASA and their attempts to rescue him. And yet... At the same time, not quite. So it kind of spreads out the dramatic tension between what's going on on Earth to rescue him and Matt Damon's character being stranded on Mars. And none of them really reach this fever pitch of like, oh, how's he going to get out of this? Is What's going to happen? Is he going to survive? I don't want to say that the movie was entirely predictable, but at the same time, it just didn't quite... Yes, there were setbacks, there were situations that built up the, the tensions and made the character, made the situation more urgent, but it didn't feel all of that harrowing, honestly. It didn't feel like 
oh, really, how's he going to get out of this? He's got to come up with some genius plan. And all that being said, though, one thing that I do give the movie a lot of credit for was that in many ways it was understated in that I can think of other movies. The, the movie Armageddon comes to mind, another space movie, survival, all that, dramatic stakes. And in that movie, there's the scene where Bruce Willis is talking to Liv Tyler, and it's like, I'm going to die. And she's like, no, Daddy, I don't want you to die. And, it, you know, the music swells, and it's melodramatic. It, it's, it goes beyond the kind of, here's a person, here's their goal, here's the obstacles they face, just, you know, basic drama into this soap opera-ish, heightened emotions, we're going to, you know, we're going to, punch you in the chest, take your heart and rip your heartstrings out of your throat or something. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like those movies that are really heavy handed with the emotional things. This movie never resorts to trying to, you know, rip out your heartstrings and strangle you with them or, you know, pick your metaphor. I don't even know if that metaphor makes sense, but you know what I'm saying. There, those movie, there, there are always those movies that are just like, Tone it fucking down, jeez. Also, I should say that at times this movie felt a little bit like propaganda for NASA, and yet I'm surprisingly okay with that, to be honest. It's not like the military-industrial complex when they're like, okay, we're gonna give you a lot of money to help you make your movie, but you gotta be all like, America fuck yeah in your movie. All right, Superman at the end of the movie has got to fly down and say, be like, I'm all for America. No, I will not use my powers to challenge American foreign policy. Keep on killing people in drone strikes. Truth, justice, and the American way. Right? Don't you all feel a little bit dirty when you see things like that in the movie, when the military has helped pay for it? And NASA cooperated with this movie. The plus side to NASA's involvement with the movie was that it's a fairly grounded in reality movie, not everything is 100% scientifically accurate, but it's not entirely flights of fancy. Personally, the most unbelievable part of the movie that I thought of was the spaceship that they take from Earth to Mars, and the fact that they're planning multiple manned mission to Mars. They take this giant spaceship that basically looks like a moving version of the International Space Station, I'm like... NASA's never going to have the fucking budget for that, so uh, good luck with making that come true. But other parts of the movie, I mean, I've heard things like Matt Damon's character would be killed by radiation. That was on a Big Think video the other day, uh, and all these other things, problems of that sort with going to Mars. Nonetheless, more or less, ba you know, grounded in reality sort of movie, and... I think that's all I want to say about the movie for right now. It's a good movie. Go see it if you're inclined to. And have a nice whatever time it is.